Lord. Hello, everyone. You are welcome to MFM Tallinn weekly online broadcast, Tag Be Strong. We are happy to see you watching our videos. We believe you are getting blessed by them. We trust God that this broadcast will bless you mightily as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, by the grace of God, I'm happy to bring the word of God to you. And I've titled it, Gen Z Pharisee. Gen Z Pharisee. I want to believe that you are familiar with the word Gen Z. That is, people born in the 20th century. And um, from 2000 upwards. So some people, even in the 90s, have the same characteristics as this Gen Z group of people. So I've titled it Gen Z Pharisy. And by the grace of God, this teaching will be a series. So this is going to be part one of Gen Z Pharisy. Quickly, let's go into the scriptures. Let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 and i'll be reading from the king james version it goes thus for though ye have ten thousand instructors in christ yet have ye not many fathers for in christ jesus i have begotten you through the gospel let's read that again so that it can sink well into our hearts for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Today, I'll be speaking on the first characteristics of the Gen Z Pharisee. And this characteristic is what I've called having many fathers. The Gen Z Pharisee Christian has many fathers. Normally from the scriptures, the person that you call your father in the gospel is somebody that played the major roles in either combating and nurturing and building you up spiritually until you become a mature Christian. And even after you have become a mature Christian, they still once in a while do check up on you. These are the people that we categorize as fathers. Now, let me repeat for emphasis six. They are involved in the process of your conversion sometimes they may not be involved in the process of your conversion but they are fully involved in the process of your growing discipling until you become a matured christian they have labored upon you not only in prayers not only spiritually but also with their finances they have been there for you through thick and thin they are the first place you run to for succor when you have emergencies. These persons have the right to be called your father in faith. And because they are your father in faith, one way or the other, you have imbibed some of their practices. And anywhere you go, when you start to speak, or when you start to pray, people that are familiar with that sound can quickly trace you back to your father. He sounds, he ministers like someone that has been under the tutelage of somebody. So you can be easily traced to your father. Now we have established who the father figure is to a Christian. Now, Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians says, you can have 10,000 instructors. Because even the fathers learn from instructors. 
Now, this is what Gen Z Pharisees do. They abandon their fathers in the gospel. Maybe because their father isn't popular or their father isn't wealthy or isn't a celebrity pastor. And because of that, they adopt other fathers. And they don't just stop at that. They adopt many fathers. Just one person claim, this bishop is my father, this apostle is my father, this pastor is my father, this prophet is my father. You have like seven persons that you are claiming that you are your fathers. This simply means you are operating under the influence of confusion. Paul, in his admonition to the Corinthian church, he says, you can have 10,000 teachers, but I am your father. Through the gospel, you can't have many fathers. Because even the fathers themselves also learn. They have instructors. You see, every now and then, we have people by the power of the Holy Spirit that come with powerful message to instruct the church, to instruct the people of God. Yes, we have many instructors, but you as a Christian, you should have few fathers. Because a father is somebody you have easy access to. Many of the people, the Gen Z Pharisee are calling fathers, don't even know them. Your father should know you. He should know your voice. He should have your phone number. If possible, he should know your address. So that in case of emergency, he can arrive to your succor at speed. But let me tell you the plain truth. Anyone you claim to be your father in faith that does not know your address, know your phone number, that cannot scold you, that cannot discipline you, that cannot encourage you when you are down, the person is not your father. The person is just an instructor to you in faith. He may, go, he may be a wonderful preacher, a powerful evangelist, an anointed apostle, or a very, very high rank a bishop, they, to you, they are your teachers. They are not your father. Your father is somebody you can always run to. I know the persons that labored upon my life as I was growing up spiritually as a young man. I still have the vivid image of the woman that gave me my first Bible. I know my father's in faith. And my father knows me. When I pick up my phone and I give and I make a call to my father, if he's not available, he will call me as soon as possible. That is what is called a father and son relationship. Anyone you call a father, that you cannot send a text message to and they will reply you in 24 hours. To be sincere with you, the person is not your father. The person is your instructor in Christ. Now, I want you to go back to your father and be a good son to your father. Many Christians have abandoned their fathers in faith and they are running after so-called anointed apostle bishops because they feel they are more popular and by association they too can get popular it doesn't work like that go and be a true son to your father in faith go and serve him sincerely go and serve him wholeheartedly not just serving him no go and bless him let his heart bless you let us act rejoice at your successes. Some of us, some of our fathers in the Lord, they have labored on, on us and immediately we get this little breakthrough. We disconnect from them. We believe we cannot stand on our own. You need to repent. You need to repent. There's an adage that says that what elders, what fathers see while sitting down, when a young man is even sitting on a tree, he won't be able to see it. 
My prayer for you is that you will not fall into the wrong hands, you will not fall into hell, and the devil will not seize this opportunity of ignorance to attack you in the name of Jesus. Your father is somebody that you can always call at any time of emergency and you'll get a call back within 24 hours. I hope this has blessed you. Next week, we'll continue on the series of Gen Z Pharisee. Let us pray. I have you, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for opening our eyes to see this wisdom in the scriptures. We give you praise, glory, honor, and adoration. Lord, we pray. As many father and son relationship in your church that has been broken, Lord, mend the heart. Heal this relationship. Restore this relationship. Lord, the blessings of association with the fathers, let it flow into the life of the sons. Oh, give the sons the humble heart to honor the fathers of faith in this season. Lord, bless your church. Lord, revive your church. Lord, we pray that you open great and effective door unto your church in this season for evangelism. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you have been blessed by that word, please do the work of an evangelist. Share our video on your WhatsApp status and your Facebook page. And as you do so, the Lord bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Remember, this broadcast has been brought to you by MFM Talim. It's a weekly online broadcast. We've called it Be Strong. We put it out of the scriptures, Ephesians 6 verse 10. That says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm your friend in the school of prayer and deliverance, Pastor Tunde Aulogo. God bless you and see you next week. Bye. Bye.